Hey, boys and girls, I have uh, Mr. Musk with us today. And uh, first off, thank you so much for uh, for agreeing. It's like, uh, I don't know what time it is, but late. And um, and uh, you've got two more hours to go. So we're going to fly through this as quick as possible. Sure. Make it painless. Anyway, first off, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate your analysis over the years. It's, uh, uh, I think, accurate and thoughtful. Well, I, I think that uh, I think that so far the we haven't really released a heck of a lot, but we've got something like five hours of video and whatnot that I know people are going to be very very. In fact, <laughs> I've already uh, gotten a little note from uh, Jim Farley saying when are you going to release the information. So uh, I know everybody is really really interested in this, and I just have one quick question for you. This has been. <laughs> A hell of a week, uh, based on what I've seen on X. But um, yeah. what was the high point, as far as you're concerned, with the uh, with with how, with what happened this week and whatnot? Apart from the fact that you know you released it, yeah, but yeah. which I mean, which thing a, really? Yeah, I mean this is our biggest product release in quite a while, um, and um, the, I mean the Cybertruck is our you know probably our most revolutionary product. So I've for it to actually reach production and to deliver uh, deliver the first art production articles to people, you know, which means it's passed all of the regulatory tests and um, it, and is reliable and some, you know, something that could, can be out there on the roads uh, was was extremely difficult. Uh, I've, I've often said that uh, you know prototypes are easy, production is hard. Um, you know, with a, with a small team, you can make a prototype of almost anything. With uh, in maybe six six months with a hundred people, uh, but to uh, actually create a production system, you need ten sort of ten thousand people, and and uh, two years or three years. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Much, well, actually, two or three years. Most people can't even do that. So, um, and I, I, you may not know this, but I uh, I tag Tesla as uh, working at the speed of thought, not not like what everybody else does. You know, committees and whatnot. You guys seem to be able to spot something that should be done, and maybe other people have spotted it as well, but you actually get it done. And that's where, like, self-driving, I'm really, uh, I've driven it. I, I'm very impressed with that. Um, I did give him one suggestion, though. Uh, taking this the first time into a great big giant um, uh, parking garage, that winding doodad, I've asked the guys whether or not there's something you can do about putting a little, like a bar on the bottom so I can see where the hell my wheels are. And they said, no, it's software done. And I think they may have implemented it already. And that's what I mean by speed of thought. So I, I, I like that kind of stuff. This episode of Monroe Live is brought to you by the Three Dimensional Services Group. Hey, boys and girls, I'm here with Dan, and we're at um, Three Dimensional Services Group. And... Um, Dan, uh, this is pretty impressive. Why don't you, you give us a little background on, uh, on what you guys do here? Okay, well, uh, the Three Dimensional Services Group was founded by Douglas Peterson 31 years ago. Uh, we've grown into the world's largest, most capable and most agile prototype and low volume manufacturer. In essence, we're a job shop on steroids. We work with the world's most innovative companies to validate their designs, and then we're able to take our low volume manufacturing processes and scale them across a massive amount of equipment to allow us to support volumes that a traditional prototype shop would never be able to support. Uh, we, we're always working with our clients to accelerate their product development type timelines and enable them to be as successful as possible by bringing their market or their products to market as quickly as possible. So you've got some of the big names here. <clears throat> Fook is one of the uh, one of the machines that most companies aspire to, but you said you've got 18 more coming or something. 18? 16 coming over the next coming months, taking us to 88 machines in total. These are from brands like Starag, Bavius, Hermley, Fook. Haas, YCM, we've got a variety of mills for a variety of applications. So metal stamping is the core of our business. And this press right here is one of the larger beds we have. This is a 1500 ton press 
it's one of 127 presses that we have company-wide. They've all got a variety of configurations allowing us to take on a variety of jobs. Uh, th but really, this is the core of our business. We are vertically integrated from a tool design perspective, run all our own parts, and then laser cut them as well. So this is all handled in-house, vertically integrated at a significant scale. So how many presses do you have then? 127 presses ranging from 20 tons to 5,000 tons. 5,000, really? What are you doing on a 5,000 ton press? Tubular hydroforming. Oh, hydroforming. Oh, okay, good. Okay, so we're moved over here and we're now standing in front of a Trump uh, 7045, 7040 yes. uh, Trump laser. And um, we're going to hear a little bit about its capability. It's got five axis, did you yeah, say? Yeah, this is a five axis laser. Uh, we've got 25 Trump 5-axis systems company-wide. Uh, this particular version is a 6-kilowatt machine. Um, these are the finest 5-axis laser-cutting machines available on the market. Yeah, so th this is uh, really the top-of-the-line Trump equipment. Its software is integrated with our 2D lasers, allowing for us to cut blanks and instantly bring them over here and bend a perfect part repeatedly. Uh, we're gonna be able to produce very, very precision parts very quickly at a significant scale with this sort of equipment. And we're great, we're very grateful to our partners at Trump that have um, given us this equipment to use here. Okay, so Dan, I can see that we're moving pieces over here and we're standing in, in front of some sort of a three axis welding system or whatever. It's a cutting it's, system. It's a cutting system. Yes, so this is uh, our Trump True Store system. We've got a twin tower feeding a butterfly configuration, 250, 40, uh, 12 kilowatt 2D lasers are running off of this automation system, um, allowing us to keep these lasers running as efficiently as possible. Um, the speed of these lasers when we get up to the power that we currently have absolutely necessitates this automation allowing us to keep the laser running as often as possible hmm. you know um, it's funny uh, well not really funny but um, <clears throat> um, to me it's very interesting you have uh, uh, a pre-production facility that I'm sure uh, pretty much everybody would die to have um, I'm I'm surprised that you're not you may be the biggest in the world right now but uh, I'm surprised you're not twice as big because everything you're doing here is things that OEMs and tier ones should be doing Absolutely. and I I've seen I've seen progress slow right down with other companies with with bigger OEMs of, of, of any type whether it's aerospace or, or uh, appliances whatever they always slow down because they try and do it internally. This is the best thing as far as I'm concerned and looking at what you've got going on here, it seems to me that if I was in that kind of a situation, that's what I'd want from you. Uh, so that's that's my assessment of everything I've seen here today. Yeah, we, we appreciate that. And we, we want to work with the world's most innovative companies. We want to work with the companies that want to go fast and really change the world. Uh, we are a job shop. <laughs> All of the capabilities that everybody's seen here are available to anybody that wants them. It's, it's as simple as just sending us your data and, and getting a project started. Thanks to the Three Dimensional Services Group for sponsoring this video. Whether you're looking to source metal stamping, precision CNC machining, laser cutting, welded assembly, or plastic injection molding, the Three Dimensional Services Group should be the source to transform your EV aerospace, appliance, or technology designs into reality, while also providing a bridge to start of production. 48 volts. I mean, It's been hard a long time, time that it's been at 12 volts, far too long. Yeah, yeah 60 years. Yeah. So I've got a question for you. How difficult was it to move from 12 to 48? Because I know when the S came out, yeah. I wasn't, or the Plaid came out, I. I wasn't happy. I thought you were going to do it on that. I was looking for that big giant weight reduction and cutting all the wire and whatnot. But this one, you've got it in. So how, yeah. how difficult was it to, to get that to happen? 
Well, it's, it's very difficult to change the, the bus voltage from 12 to 48 because all of the peripheral items, everything that connects to yeah. it has to uh, interface with 48 volts or you've got to step down to 12 volts. Yeah. So, uh, you know, there are, there are hundreds of things that interface to the, the, the low voltage bus. Um, and that's everything from, you know, the electronics in the car, the, the window, yeah. the, the window motor, the uh, airbags, the, 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 you know, the, thing, the, the, the seat adjustment mode, everything, yeah, everything. Is, is set, the, 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 the headlamps, everything's set to 12 volts. Um, so the entire supply chain, um, the entire design infrastructure is set for 12 volts. This is why it's been stuck at this absurdly low number for a long time. Um, and I think, <clears throat> I mean, it's the it's people that uh, uh, know a little bit about electrical, electrical engineering, um, you don't need to know a lot, but just a little bit, uh, will understand that uh, you, you, you actually want a higher voltage in order to reduce the uh, re resistance losses. Right. So um, the, the, the heating in any wire is the current uh, is I squared R, you know, yep. so it's uh, the, 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 the square of the current. So if you're trying to get a particular power rating through, then uh, as you are, um, as you, as you increase the voltage, uh, you can decrease the current to, uh, so that voltage times amperage uh, equals yeah. your power so it's so to hold, hold power constant. Um, but the heating is is proportionate to the square of the current. So you want to raise the voltage in order to lower the current, thus lower the heating uh, in the wire. And the net effect being that you can have um, much uh, thinner wires um, than uh, as as you raise the voltage, you can you can drop the the, the, the thickness of the wire. So you can have much, you can use much less, in, in a nutshell, you can use much less copper um, and the wire harness weighs much less yeah. as you raise the voltage. But you did even more because you went to the new um, bus system. And, um, you know, um, in the 80s when I was still working for Ford, yeah. I did everything I could to try and get us to go to um, um, the it was a bus system that uh, that did that failed and um and we couldn't get that to happen and once it failed that's it we can never go back again it's failed it'll never work it'll never work but you guys made it work and i heard a couple of different numbers but somewhere between <clears throat> in in uh in uh, percentage of weight and what sometimes something around 70 percent of the communication wire disappeared 48 volt who, who cares it's yeah. gone and this is another thing that, um, you know, multiplexing was, that's the name that it used to be called. But anyways, multiplexing was really good, but it was, it was too slow. Yeah. Um, and you've got it to work. And I, I just, I, maybe you could explain who, who came up with it? When did you decide that you were going to go in that direction? Was it part of the 48 volt discussion or how did that work? Um, well, there's, there's actually a couple of things happening. Uh, so besides 48 volts, it's also moving to ethernet um, right, yeah. uh, over CAN bus. Yep. So ethernet just allows for a much higher data rate than um, the sort of the CAN bus, which is the, the sort of typical data bus on a car. Um, the, um, you know, one of the, one of the effects of, of being able to, of having a very high bandwidth bus is, uh, is that you don't have to have as many point to point wires because you're not constrained by the data rate. So if, if, if your data rate per wire is low, as it is typically with CAN bus, you have to have many point to point wires. Whereas if um, you have a very high data rate like Ethernet, then you can simply uh, attach to the bus and not worry about um, any kind of latency or, or packet loss or, or you know, da data loss, essentially. So it's um, so, so you need far fewer point to point wires. Um, so it, it's both going to uh, four times higher voltage, thus having thinner wires and needing fewer wires because we have a much higher data rate bus. Now, I, I think, frankly, these things are pretty obvious. They're like it, it's simply bringing cars to the, you know, the year the 21st century um, yeah. because we've had Ethernet for a long time. Yeah, um, there's, there's, there's nothing that's really prevented the car industry from moving to a higher bus voltage uh, and a, a high, a much a higher data rate system than, than CAN bus, which is a very old protocol. Um, and so I feel like actually what we're doing is we're, we're, we're kind of doing, making the obvious moves. They seem very obvious to me, like as, a, as opposed to like some, you know, Eureka, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's not like, is it actually a breakthrough? Well, we're just trying to bring car electronics to, you know, the year 2023. 
right uh similar to what you'd have for you know in a laptop or a you know any, any kind of computer well without sounding like i'm sucking up because hey almost never do. Um, I just think it's because of leadership. Um, I, I work with many different car companies, <clears throat> some of them big, some of them small. But to make a decision like that usually involves, number one, a bunch of MBAs, and number two, lawyers. And as soon as that comes into play, boom, <laughs> I don't care what, sure. what engineer, if you haven't got a leader that's going to be, no, nah, I don't care, just do it. And, um, and yeah. that kind of an obvious idea to an engineer is totally oblivious to people who count beans and and um, and basically uh, try and make you do nothing, nothing new. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, I think it, it, if if so, if somebody's gonna, I, I believe it's important to be good at the to have some good understanding of the field that you are leading. So uh, if if you're leading, say, a technology company, you want to be, I think, good at engineering or reasonably good at engineering. Uh, you need to uh, if you're you know, leading a company which is sort of more marketing based, then you, I think, being being as skilled at marketing is is uh, is fine. But um, you know, like you, you you don't want the you, you don't want your product to be um, something that you don't understand, essentially. So uh, there's a lot of technology in the car, so I think it's important to have an understanding of technology of engineering in order to make sensible decisions. Um, I mean. Even for something I think as trivial as I squared R heating, uh, if you ask, I think there won't be that many technology company CEOs who would know what that means. I would say zero, except for you. <laughs> I mean, uh, maybe I, a mean few. I think like Jensen Wong at uh, well, maybe, Nvidia and a yeah, few others, yeah, you know, maybe. Would know. But at the end of the um, day, very very few would know. Um, and um, and if they did know, it wouldn't make any difference anyway, because again, they're going to have to bump in to the same roadblocks over and over again. And yeah. then there's the other roadblock, the Nishna roadblock. And you've got um, basically steer by wire. I, yeah, steer by I, wire is, is, is awesome. If you actually, the, the, I, I didn't really spend much time on it uh, in the Cybertruck presentation because it, it was hard to explain why it's going to be great. Um, but you have to, if you drive the car, it's right. immediately obvious. That's yes, exactly. Um, so the, the steer by wire means that the, 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 the steering yoke um, is not mechanically connected to the wheels. Yeah. So you now, now this is the way that all modern uh, jet airliners are made. It's um, uh, yeah. You know, it's the the sort of the, the steering yoke or stick on on a modern airliner is simply a command to the computer. Um, so for the Cybertruck, the the steering yoke is a command to the computer. So that means we can adjust the gain. Um, which so, uh, and I'll, I'll you know try to say this. In, in ways that, say, an engineering audience would understand, but also that maybe the, a general audience would also understand. Um, by variable gain, it's kind of like turning out uh, the, if you've got an amplifier or something, do you turn the amplifier uh, to a low setting or a high setting? And, and so you can increase the amplification of the, the motion of your steering yoke um, according to what speed you're driving. So that if you're uh, in a parking lot, or it, like if you're low speed driving, then a small movement of the steering yoke uh, results in a big movement in the wheels, so that you can you, you can do um, you know a, a U-turn with with minimal movement of the, the steer of the steering yoke. Um, but then, if you're on a highway and you're moving very fast, you want um, the wheels to only move a small amount when you move the yoke. So right. it, it's it's it it basically moves the wheels the right amount based on the speed that you're going and what your intentions are. Well, the other good thing too is this has rear wheel steering. Yeah. So when I first got into it, it's very, um, I don't know, nerve wracking or imposing anyway. First time you get in this thing, it's a very expensive truck. I got like, um, <laughs> I got maybe a couple of minutes of um, uh, like Rich Otto uh, made all this stuff happen. Anyway, um, he said, well, this, 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 this and this. Hey, got to go because the, you know, he had a lot of stuff to prepare. <clears throat> so we got out and the very first thing I noticed very first thing I noticed was I got to get out of this parking spot and with rear wheel steering along with front wheel steering as well you it's like it turned on a dime yes. this is not like trying to turn the Queen Mary around this no. is a this is a really really in a in a parking lot yeah. this is going to kick everyone's tail yeah, I mean so it, it turns it, like it, a small car even though it's yeah. a big car yeah so that was another thing that has been talked about for years but never implemented 
this car has got so many, or this truck has got so many applications that engineers have been talking about uh, since, I don't know, Moses was a pup. This is, this is kind of like everything that, um, everything that I was kind of hoping to see. So I'm, I'm very, very excited. I also, um, you know, I haven't been the biggest fan of the Model 3 and the Model uh, Y's backseat. This one here is a monster. I mean, uh, uh, this is this is really, I'm, I'm really, really delighted with that. When I got in there, I brought it around, showed it to everybody. They absolutely love that back seat. Yeah, so, it's very roomy inside. I mean, you can, yeah. five large adults can easily sit yeah, in the car. Yeah, easily, yeah. And I mean, like I said, I drove it around. Oh, I love the big, <clears throat> so there's uh, there's a bunch of people at General Motors when we were trying to help them out. Um, I said, well, why we got two windshield wipers? Why don't we just put it? Yours doesn't have it, but I wanted a cam action that would catch both sides. You don't need it. That, that windshield's so huge and that blade is so gigantic. It, it yeah, never it's like a katana, katana blade windshield. It's like, yeah. well, giant sword. Yeah. yeah, it is. And and it works re reasonably well because uh, I don't know how you arranged that we were going to drive in the rain and the fog and the mud. Uh, but it worked out quite good because we've got tons of uh, really good um, really good footage on how yeah. that thing works and whatnot. So I... I um, I love a lot of it. Um, your guys told me all about the uh, uh, the aluminum, or sorry, the stainless steel, and it's a 30 XX, whatever. Yeah, but it's a 300 um, series cu custom alloy that we made. Yeah, but the big thing for me was when I found out, I was pretty sure it'd be austenitic because you can't have rust, but I didn't know that you take the austenite, work harden it, and then now it's met mer sorry martensite, Martin yeah. and uh, and hence the reason I couldn't understand the bullets because I've shot through, I, I do some hunting and I've shot through stainless steel in the past, Yeah. but with Martin's side, there's no chance. So yeah. that was a, that was a big surprise. I've got a question for you though. What was the biggest hold, hold up? I mean, everybody's been, you know, holding their breath for, for uh, at least four years. So what, what really was the, the biggest, uh, the biggest challenge? Um, well, uh, I think people sometimes forget you know, it's not like we're going to deliver the car in 2019. We announced the car in 2019. I think we sort of expected perhaps that we'd be in production in 20, you know, a couple of years later in 21 or something like that. Um, but, uh, you know, there, there was a worldwide pandemic. Um, then there was yeah. a global chip shortage. Yeah. Um, and uh, there were shortages of, of so many parts. It would be irrelevant for us to bring to market a, a car for which that we simply do not have parts to make. Yeah. Hmm. So that's a, that's a pretty good reason. Yeah. So I've got to, <laughs> I mean, it would add, it would I add, got no parts. It would it. add complexity, but, yeah. but we would not ship yeah. any incremental units. And that's, that's, uh, it would actually make the, make the company worse. Yeah. So at the end of the day, um, I wasn't going to try and answer that question. You know, a lot of people have been asking, well, first off, we were under a, an NDA kind of thing. And then, and then people were asking me the same question over and over again. And I'm thinking, you know what? This would be a good time for you to shut up, Sandy. And let's find out for sure. And that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, uh, it just wasn't there. We couldn't make them. So now, well, I the mean, for a few years there, we 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 actually uh, couldn't even make enough of the Model Y and Model Three. Uh, we yeah. were we were actually production constrained because of, of multiple parts shortages. So the, yeah. the the global pandemic shut down massive sections of the global supply chain. Yeah. Um, well, so it was true for everyone. Yeah, I mean, true for everyone. Was nobody, nobody was immune to that stuff. Right. Um, but. So, so it was just we, if we if we can't even make enough of the cars that we have already designed, what's the point of bringing a new one to market? Right. So I've got another question. Then, what are you looking at? I've been asked uh, um, Bloomberg and uh, um, I don't know a bunch of bunch of these different news magazines have been asking me what's the you know volume going to be for this thing, uh, say in twelve months. What are you looking at? Well, uh, we have to be cautious about forward-looking statements as a public, publicly traded company. Um, oh. This is not a, and it's also very difficult to forecast the production ramp in the beginning because the production ramp always is like this very difficult S curve, which means the production is very slow in the beginning. Um, you're constrained by whatever the least lucky, least competent thing out of ten thousand items is. Yeah. So. The weak uh, link. Yeah, there's at least 10,000 unique parts and processes required to scale production. And whatever the, 
the, like I said, the least lucky, uh, dumbest thing in the whole system, and it could be something complicated or something trivial, that actually sets your, your output rate. Um, so it's difficult, it's very difficult to predict the slope of that S curve. Um, that's why, you know, it's, and, 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 and even just a few months difference, one way or the other, can really change the unit volume. Um, the, but the, 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 the Cybertruck is not something that will be material to, the, to Tesla's uh, financials next year. Um, meaning it will not, you know, of the vehicles we make, it will be a, 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 still such a small percentage that it will not be material in 2024. It will probably be material in 2025. Yeah. Well, um, I when we went down, they were dry cycling the machines and whatnot. And, um, you know, I, I'm a pretty good guesser. And um, and it looked to me like this thing could be produced at uh, 60, well, point every 60 seconds, 60 jobs an hour, whatever you want. It, yeah, it seemed to be somewhere in there. And your other ones, when I went through here before, uh, the Model Y was doing about 43 seconds, and I got exactly the same number when I went through, uh, <clears throat> when I went through, um, what do you call it, uh, Berlin. Um, so I think at 60, uh, 60 jobs per hour is kind of like where everybody else is. Nobody's at 43. Nobody. So that, you're unique, that, that's, that's great for the, uh, uh, for the 3 and the, um, and, and the Y. Um, uh, I'm just hoping this thing will ramp up quickly. Uh, I, I I know that I talked to. Oh, we missed you at the party last night. <laughs> I'm sure you had other other things on your mind, but I, there was a there was about two thousand people there. Um, and or Bex had this party. Anyhow, it it was really kind of cool. But I, if you could have been there, or maybe just been a fly on the wall to hear what uh, what everyone had to say. I mean, there was plenty of cheering and, uh, yeah. and plenty of uh, plenty of people anxiously awaiting um their their delivery on this so i i think that i think that this is without a question of a doubt the most brilliant product that i worked on we, we worked on the mini but not the original one so when isagonis yeah. brought that out that was a big deal yeah. and then they, and Hello? danger danger <laughs> i don't even know what I mean, I have no idea the what PA that system, was. Yeah. it's not even clear what the PA system yeah, is saying. But anyways, on this one here, I think that this is the most iconic vehicle that we've seen in at least 40 years, 30 or 40 years. Yeah. This is, this is. This is uh, I specifically wanted to make something where, that looked like the future. Well, so, yeah. It's like, I mean, I think that the really it's like if, what car would Blade Runner drive? <laughs> that one. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's, <laughs> that's kind of like what Very I was looking at. I mean, I mean, it's an uh, armored personnel carrier from the future. Exactly. And quite frankly, um, I, I wanted to do something like this. Yeah. When I was working at, um, we were working for um, uh, Land Rover, and they, you know, there was a thing called Ju Judge Dredd. Yeah, Judge Dredd. They, Judge Dredd would drive this car for sure. Exactly. And that's what we wanted to do. I wanted yeah. to buy the frames ship them over to uh, the States, and then I would put a Judge Dredd body on it. They wouldn't go for it. No, 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 that, that'll never work. This, on the other hand, is just absolutely phenomenal. When we were driving, there was fog and muck and yeah. whatnot. The, the wing mirrors were continuously fogging up, but it didn't matter. Once I found out that I could, so I just turned a turn signal on, I could see what was going on. If I needed to see something else, yeah. flip on the turn signal, the, the camera comes up as clear as day, perfect, perfect. And then I find out that you also can wash the, uh, wash the, uh, the glass, like the, uh, the lenses off. Brilliant, I mean, uh, I, I just don't understand why it is that no one else has kind of like jumped into this. Everybody else said, oh, there's a regulation. Well, that means that we, we just gotta stop right there. And that's, that's the stupid part. But I I, uh, I got a chance to see all the stuff. I mean, I'm really kind of impressed from an engineering standpoint. This is like, this is like nothing. Nobody's got anything quite like this. So yeah. um, I'm, like I say, uh, I know you, you're pressed for time, but I have just one other thing I'd like sure. to talk about a little bit. So we have this iconic vehicle, and it'll be um, it'll be great. I'm hoping. Hoping I can get a couple of them. So I, I know that this is going to be a great vehicle, but 
there's the other guys that are also uh, dying to get a Tesla, the $25,000 Tesla. And so I'm wondering where, where is that exactly? Where, where are you with that? Yeah, unfortunately, because we're a publicly traded company, I cannot comment on things that would have uh, a material impact on our financials. Uh, okay, well, there you go. Hey, <laughs> yeah, but anyways, I, um, I'm hoping that that's not too far down the line. I really, really would like to see something where we can, um, where like this one here, uh, I'm told that uh, the one that, the, I, I'm looking for the beast, the tri-motor and everything. Yeah. And, um, and I'd like to get two of those. And that vehicle is like a hundred plus grand. I think that, I think that that's the right price for this, but it's not the right price for the, for the kid that wants to take one to uh, college or whatnot. So that's why I'm, I'm kind of anxious to find out what, what it is that can be done for those, uh, others that, uh, that want to get into electrification, but can't. So if we can't do that, then let me shift gears. And what do you think about well, the new? I can say a little oh. bit. I just can't tell you, you know, unit volume and dates because that yeah. has a mass. Uh, that then that is a uh, that is projecting the financials. Yeah. Um, so we obviously are we are working on a low cost electric vehicle that will be made in very high volume. Um, we're like, quite far advanced in that work. The you know I review the the production line plans for that every week. Um, and I think the, the, the revolution in manufacturing that will be represented by that car uh, will blow people's minds. It is not like any car production line that anyone's ever seen. Is this gonna have the uh, basically um, unboxed system or would this be too much of a question to ask? The, the thing, the thing that's most interesting about this is, is it's a production system. It's, it's a level of production technology that is uh, far in advance of any automotive plant on earth. Not can hardly wait. Now, yeah, yeah, it's going to be cool. It's going to be very um, cool. Sure. Yeah, I think we're, you know, um, and, and I should point out the uh, that that we will be making that the. the the, the first production line will be here in the Gigafactory in Texas, in, 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 this, in this facility. Oh, I thought it was going to be in Mexico or something. That'll be the second place. Hmm. Wow, that's way cool. It would take too long to complete the factory in Mexico. Well, this place here seems to be growing every time I come here. It seems to get bigger. Um, and yeah, we're so adding a, a significant extension on the south. and. Um, adding more buildings on the, on the, we have 2,000 acres. So this is really just a small part of the property. Yeah. Well, I also, I kept hearing phase one, this is phase one. So this is phase one. I can't imagine what all the other phases must be. So it's, yeah. And this building is, uh, is three times the size of the Pentagon. Yeah. Well, the Pentagon, I got lost in as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's easy to do that. But this, this building is so unique in that everybody has, ever since Albert Kahn, showed us, hey, let's have a flat building and yeah. get, gobble up a whole bunch of property and then we don't have to go up and down. Blah, we do blah. actually it have was, floors on this building. What's that? We, we do have floors. This building yeah. is... Uh, yeah, I know. This has yeah, got yeah. plenty of floors. And, and what's nice about it is I start with the light stuff and I move it down to the heavy stuff and then I, I drive it out the door. This, whoops, that thing right over there, the seat system, that's a, that's a great example of, um, of I mean, People have talked about doing that. Nobody had the guts to do that. And uh, and by the way, I don't know, I don't know uh, if you know it, but um, my uh, my office chair is a model y, a model Y seat that okay. I put little rollers on. It's really and, comfortable. Well, I have a bad, I have a real problem with my back, and um, and that's the only thing. I mean, I don't I don't need to have a chiropractor. I mean, I haven't gone to the chiropractor in over a year a year and a half, I guess now, because that seat, I have no idea, you know, we've taken them apart and whatnot, but I'm not a seat engineer. That just seems to be perfect for uh, for everybody that I know of that sits in the front seats, absolutely loves them. So, but having those and popping them in and I mean, all the, all the glorious stuff you did with the, um, with how uh, manufacturing should be done. I, I it drives me wild uh, why other people haven't, done anything but again i it, it i 
I don't know. It, I, I hate to start dro drooling all over you, but I think it's just great leadership. I yeah. um, I really I really appreciate that. So, yeah, I mean, I push things very hard on engineering front. Um, so um, I, we would have been more adventurous uh, actually with you know with the Model Three or Model Y, but we we couldn't take a chance on. Uh, on being too radical because if, if those were bet the company cars. So, mm. um, you know, with, with the Cybertruck, it's no longer a bet the company situation. So we have the freedom to be adventurous here. Mm. So let me ask uh, an adventurous question. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I made a lot of noise about what I think the future is going to look like. And one of the things that I've said is that Probably uh, the biggest car company on the planet will be BYD. And then I'm putting Tesla in on second simply because BYD's got such a head start. Um, I've heard plenty of people, you know, criticizing that. But who do you think is going to be the winners and losers in, um, in the car industry? Well, I think it's too early to say for sure, but... Um... I mean, the future is definitely electric. So yeah. companies that are not making a significant investment in electric, electric vehicles are basically consigning themselves to the fate of the horse and buggy market, uh, you know, in the 1920s. Yeah. You know, there were companies that would double down on, the, on, on horse carriages. Um, and, and actually, you know, so, so you, you, know, you don't want to be the buggy whip manufacturer in the age of automobiles. Yeah. Exactly right. <laughs> so, so um, but there, for me, there's two giants, uh, three giants that um, I think are going to come down real hard, and um, and one in particular. But I, I, I just decided I don't want to go down that path. So what I want to do is yeah. is basically um, basically just tell you that this has really been phenomenal. I I'm really hoping that somehow I can make something happen for. Uh, us to, well, for me, first off, to drive something around, and then secondly, something that we can uh, we can tear down and enlighten the rest of the planet on. And by the way, I forgot, I even have a gift for you. So there you go. So um, the, um, well, you can open it up. Uh, it's got a little flap in the front. There you go. And there you are. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so anyways, uh, I, gave him, little, I gave him, I gave one bottle of cab opener? Yes, yeah. So, um, and you can glue it to the fridge too. So there yeah. you are. Fridge magnet. <laughs> yeah. Bottle opener. Yeah. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. I, uh, it's not much, but I, I, I really think that um, um, it's the least I can do for all the stuff that you've done for Monroe. I mean, you've put us on the map. I had, um, you know, it's been a, a rough first half of this year. This part of the year seems to be going a whole lot better. And, um, and I, like I say, I, I want to be cognizant of your time and, and consider it. So um, I'd like to thank you. By the way, I've got one other thing. Both of us are aliens. <laughs> We're aliens, okay? Both of us, you came from Canada and before that, uh, South Africa, I came yeah. from Canada. And I found that, that Americans have uh, kind of lost their way a little bit thinking about history. And um, there's this guy, Thomas Jefferson, Sure. And um, and Thomas Jefferson used to say um, he used to say in matters of fashion go with the flow, in matters of principle stand like a rock. I'm going to end this with shaking your hand, Thanks. thanking you, thanking you, for standing like a rock when you're sitting on a stage and someone is trying to humiliate you. I I told everybody I won't go into this and I'm not going to get all sure. you know emotional and everything, but. To me, I've watched that one clip that people have been putting out. To me, and putting up against, um, forgotten their name, Disney or Land or whatever, at the end of the day, I will never take my grandchildren ever to that place, ever. Well, and I, I think you, have to, that, you have to wonder, what would Walt Disney think of the company that oh, is his namesake today? I'm telling you what. I, mean, I think Walt Disney's turning in his grave faster than a drill bit. I, I can't. <laughs> well, I'm telling you what. I, I believe that. Yeah. Uh, I believe that uh, uh, it won't. It won't take too much longer before somebody goes, "Hey, you know what? This is bullshit." 
we we yeah. we aren't we 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 shouldn't be having this shovel down our throat any longer and then there'll be a big change but it isn't going to happen it isn't going to happen next week that's for sure and that's unfortunate but i love the first step for me right now um i think that people have gone completely stupid i think that um that i'm not supposed to talk about this either but i think that people have uh, have fallen into that same trap as what uh, nazi germany had where mass hysteria took over and um, and created a real giant mess, and and it took a world war to uh, to quell that uh, those in- incredibly bad thinking and and stuff like that. So I'm hoping that it won't take a third world war to make something like that change the way we're thinking and whatnot. But I I do believe that uh, somebody somebody has to start looking at what's going on in the education system because. Uh, listening to people talk, just I have to get up and walk away. It's very difficult for me to yeah. hire people because if I hear that kind of stuff, um, you know, we both chose this country. It wasn't right, just right, a fluke exactly. that we got born here. Right. We came here because this was this was the land of opportunity. Yes. And and for me, based, a country where where you know you 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 make progress based on on your skill and and uh, well, your, your ability to work. And that's, yeah, and that's how, the, how, how, yeah, if, if you're able to do, you know, very useful things, then you get ahead. Um, and uh, I feel like we're, we're starting to lose that. It's a big I'm concern. starting. I, I'd say that um, we're getting real close to a watershed. And when that happens, it's very, very difficult uh, to, make, uh, to make the water go uphill. So I'm, I'm very, very, very nervous. I, uh, I don't know why or how this has happened. Uh, that's not my area of expertise, but I do know yeah. what I see. I want to try to figure that out. Like, I think some of these things started probably earlier than people realize. Um, no, I'm thinking, I think when they started with the um, uh, politically correct uh, philosophy and whatnot, right. I think that uh, that tipping, that was starting, that, that's kind of like where it started. And then, it, and now it's gotten so ridiculous that it's even funny. And um, I don't know yeah. how I mean, that's going to change around. It's like, it's like, it's really just another way of saying like you have to lie to fit in. Exactly. And then how? And then more and more you have to lie to fit in, more and more lie to fit in, and eventually that 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 sort of house of cards of lies will collapse. It always does, and it always has. But when it collapses, who gets crushed? Um, and and is there any recovery from something like that? How how uh, how how damn dumb can people be? Well, uh, we've watched it happen in the past. People yes. who uh, read history uh, have watched the Roman Empire collapse, the Greeks, the Egyptians. Yeah. I mean, show me uh, show me a nation, show yeah. me a, a civilization, I should say, and I'll show you. Hey, that collapsed. And why did it collapse? Well, because the people went stupid or. They spent more time watching uh, watching what's going at the circus as opposed to watching what was happening in their backyard. I mean, yes, I mean, very few empires collapsed uh, simply due to external uh, forces. Uh, they first defeated themselves from within. Exactly. Yeah. The only way to lose in the United States would be if we if we tear it down from the inside. And it, and it seems to me anyway that there's a lot of that stuff going on right now. So, yes. Uh, I think I think I suspect things will will come to a head in the not too distant future. I hope you're well. I hope you're right, next and it moves in be, the right direction. But next uh, year is going to be something else. Yeah, now that's that's the truth too. Yeah. So anyway, I um, I, I know your son needs to get to bed. Yeah. And yeah. Um, and I, Pete, quite frank, we were at that last night. And I'm uh, fading fast. I, I had about six cups of coffee. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, All right. It was, it was a lot you. of fun. But anyways, thank you so All much. Right. Thank you, Elon. I really you. appreciate it. You're most welcome. Yeah. And uh, thanks very much, everybody, for watching. Um, and Elon, for uh, for giving up his time. And and really, I don't know what time it is, but if you've got to go back to work for another two hours, I'd say um, you qualify as, um, as a candidate. If you ever need a job, you can come to Monroe. <laughs> Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you.